Welcome to another special edition of Channel 6 Scoreboard. I'm Kelsey Williams and I'm joined by Mitchell Morgan and Michael Deer. Now guys, uh, we had UCA play OSU on the weekend. Mm -hmm. We all predicted they'd get more than 16 points. They weren't able to do this, but they did show a lot of promise mm -hmm. in the game. What did you take out that you liked? Well, um, defense. How about the difference between week one and week two for the defense? Because week one at Samford, they were getting beat constantly on big plays of more than 50 yards. The defense, I thought the improvement was awesome from week one to week two. And they say, you know, coach talk, you know, we improve a lot from week one to week two. I don't know if you can say the same about the offense, but that defense, they flew around to the ball. There were several bears on every tackle. Interception by Traymon Smith. Smith. Yep. yep. Great interception there, returning for 37 yards. Tried to give the offense a short field to work with. The offense, other than the trick play, didn't really have much going. It's kind Need of the more, same uh, thing. Trick plays going on there. Right. <laughs> and it's. You wouldn't think that this offense would need trick plays just to score. And that's where I, I, I see the concern for this team. The offense is not where it should be week two. The defense, with the gains they've made, kudos to the defensive coaching staff and the players for making great adjustments. Yeah, the defensive style of the ball looks great. I think offensive, one thing they should focus on in the bye week is not making their offense look so predictable. Teams kind of know what kind of team UCA is going to be and what they're going to do on offense. I think they should really focus on kind of using more receivers, maybe the tight end play action pass, because Taylor Reed didn't have that good of a game. He only threw one touchdown pass to Desmond Smith. He didn't throw that many yards, and so they really should focus on kind of disguising their offense to throw a little defense, or throw the defense, you know, kind of a uh, mystery. Yeah, and I, I see it as a way as the offense will get out there, and it's, you know, they say the worst thing for, an, for a defense is a really quick three and out by the offense, and I, so far this season, the offense has gone out, and it's been a lot of three and outs, and that, the defense as much time as they've spent on the field this season so far and you know you've had a very balanced offense with Samford and then you went to a more pass happy offense with Oklahoma State now you're kind of coming back again to a Northwestern State team that UCA does know more about but going back to the balance game again and this offense just has to be able to sustain drives once they get the ball moving if you if your defense gives you an interception and they return it 37 yards and you're in Oklahoma State Cowboy territory you have to get at least some points out of it I mean they did not. They have not scored a red zone touchdown this season, and they've. Only, that's. Well, why? Uh, why aren't they scoring then? Obviously, there must be a reasoning behind it. They only scored. They didn't score a touchdown in their first game against Sanford. They scored one touchdown off a trick play, like you said. What's going on with this team? We've talked so much about them having so many wide receivers. Yeah. <laughs> got, got so many seniors. Got the Beasley. depth at running back. Exactly, everything. and I mean they did lose Courtney Whitehead out for the season, supposedly maybe for um, a foot injury, if anyone saw that. It's the same one that Des, Des Bryant did get for the mm -hmm. Cowboys. But, I mean, what's going on? They have so many weapons. And that's the million-dollar question. And I like you said, it. we thought, all right, you have so many options. Maybe it's to a point now where it's – I mean, Taylor Reed's been spreading the ball around. Well, it's – I think it's more – the UCA offense has been in that zero to seven-yard range. There hasn't been intermediate passing game. There hasn't been a, a deep passing game other than the trick play. And you know, to that on that trick play, it was a reverse pitch back to Taylor Reed. The offensive line did a great job blocking that. For that trick play to work, you have to have blocked well at the line to give Taylor Reed, and he got it off just the split second that he needed to. Smith was behind the coverage. This team, the running backs, we we've seen the depth, but I, we haven't seen much of Jeff Matthews this year at running back. Beasley's carried the ball here and there sparingly in games. They're relying, it looks like, more on Dominique Thomas, and he was banged up after week one. I don't think he's 100% healthy. He could be 98.8% .8 healthy, but <laughs> this running game is not setting up the passing game, and like Mitchell said, people are now keying on that passing game, and they're not scared of UCA going deep right now. They're playing everything in front, playing zone coverage, and right now I think most teams with their game plan for UCA keep them in front of you. They do. UCA has great team speed. They have the depth. They can shuffle them in and out, and that's where, you know, offense – if the offense does not bring in any players off the sideline, any substitutes, the defense can't substitute either. That's where I think UCA should take advantage, get in a little bit more of a hurry, huddle, no huddle, and gas these defenses because right now it looks like the UCA offense is more gassed than anybody. Yeah, short and sweet, I don't think personnel is the problem. Y'all know me being the negative person. I think it's the play calling. I think that's something they really need to focus on and find some more plays, spice it up a little bit. You know, we have offensive-minded people on the coaching staff. I think they should really focus on, like I said, making it less predictable. So I don't think personnel is a problem. I think play calling is something they need to focus well, on. Well, they did only have seven errors this game, which is a lot down compared to the first game against yeah. Sanford. Yeah, penalties, that's absolutely. And Coach said, 
we're not a team that wants to throw the ball 43 times like they did at Sanford. Taylor Reed only had 25 passes this Oklahoma State game. Of course, the game was a little bit different. You know, They were closer there. And the third quarter was only 17-0. And if UCA could have made a play or two, they would have put some pressure on Oklahoma State. And I think Coach Campbell got the idea across the team that they did fix some of the easy mistakes to fix. The defense really did a great job of honing in this week. Now the bye week, twice as much. You've got to get prepared. Because now it's conference season. Now every game, every game counts. You could say, oh, 0-2, it's non-conference. But now you're coming up on conference play. We talked a lot about the negatives throughout the game. Let's talk about the positives. Mitchell, defense. How did you think they, the defense that went they this did, last game? I mean, they did great. If you watch the highlights of the game, they just flew around the ball. It seems like once one person made a contact with a Cowboy player, it seemed like everybody flew to that position and ganged up and tackled him. And so they did, I mean, they looked really well. I'm going to have to give them credit for that game. And, you know, they got an interception late in the game. That's great. Hopefully they can carry that momentum on to conference games when they play these people or these teams that they, they're used to playing. All right, so we've got the bye week coming up, as you said before they have to take on one of their conference foes, Northwestern State. What are they going to work on in this bye week? And do you think it's good that they do have a bye week before their first conference game? Yeah, I think it's great that they had the bye week this week after Oklahoma State because there's a lot of stuff that you can take from the Oklahoma State game and focus on. One thing that I'm going to keep hitting probably for the rest of the seasons is disguise your offense. Make it something that's less predictable for especially these conference opponents to see because they're kind of used to us running the same kind of offense for the, from the years past. Another thing they should focus on is, you know, kind of maybe spreading the ball around at running back. You talked about all the people that we can put back there. You know, Dominic Thomas, he's only, he only averages 59 yards, or he only had 59 yards against Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty much what he's averaging on a game. I think we should have over 100 yards rushing for this Northwestern State game. If we don't, UCA is, you know, they might lose their chance to win that game. And this past weekend of college football, we all get to watch a lot of football, was really strange. There was upsets all across the board, even here in the state of Arkansas, Toledo beating Arkansas. You nearly had an FCS team in Jacksonville State beat Auburn at Auburn. It was really crazy weekend. But then you did see the difference in TCU absolutely slaughtering Stephen F. Austin. 76 so or 77. On a weird weekend, and I, that's why I was impressed with the Bears seeing you know, third quarter, 17-0. Hearing Coach Campbell, you know, we're a play here, a play there away from really making things happen. During this bye week, I think the group that needs to have a fire lit under them this week has got to be the offensive line. Mm -hmm. This is a re group returning some starters at every, pretty much every position. They lost over off of last year's team. And now I th this offensive line has, I don't know if they're gelling right now to the point to where it needs to be. They do look like they're early on this season. The offensive line has to come together. They have to get the power run game there because if the running game is not, if, is, if it's non-existent, this passing game becomes predictable. This passing game can only do so much. And Taylor Reed is getting hit almost every other snap. If he's not getting sacked, he's getting hit as he throws the ball away. He's having to throw the ball away. He's having to get out of the pocket to try and make plays with his feet. You know, he only has 19 rushes on the year and he has 54 yards rushing. He's the third leading rushing rushing rusher, excuse me, on this team. That's not what you want from your quarterback, even though he can run the ball. So the offensive line, time to get big and step up because when I saw the defense improve from week one to week two, there's no reason why the offense shouldn't do the same thing in this bye week. Well, I think this bye week will really help these guys who have bodies knocked up to really just they get They are healthy. a banged up team too, yes. I mean, it's only been two games, but they have had two big opponents. They did play at Boone Pickens Stadium. I was lucky enough to go to the game. It was so loud out there in the atmosphere. environment. I think it might have been a little bit harder as well in the offense because there was so much noise. They're trying to communicate to one another what's going on out there. You've got horses running around. You've got people banging their sticks against the um, against the side of the arena. You had the music playing. It was it was a good atmosphere, but it's something the Bears just aren't used to. And that's a good point. The offense usually struggle, struggles more in a louder environment than the defense. Defense can go more off a... I mean, offense has their play cards and everything, but there's so much audibles at the line of scrimmage when it comes to the offense. But now this is about to be the third row game in three games. So now it doesn't matter. <laughs> they could be playing in the Coliseum. They could be playing in New York. They could be playing anywhere. Now it's a third row game this season. You know what to expect. You played in, six, in front of 6,000 people, and you played in front of 56,000 people. The road game, the road jitter should be out of the way by now. You're going to play a conference opponent. You've been there, done that before. A lot of these seniors played there when they were sophomores. They know what to expect. They've just got to fix more 
and easy mistakes. Yeah, I mean, the mis and that's the thing, the mistakes are easy to fix, and luckily, like we talked about, the bye week came at a perfect time, right before the tough, I mean, right before you play North Northwestern State, and their first home game in conference is not not a gimme. You know, no. Evelyn Christian looks good this year, like they were last year, they surprised UCA and beat them, and so their first home game is going to be a test too, so this is a perfect week for a bye week. Well, thanks Mitch and thanks Michael for joining us. The Bears will be off this week as they have a bye and get prepared for they take on their conference foe, Northwestern State. Stay tuned with Channel 6 Sports for all your latest bear and sugar bear action.